Hi, this is Bob from US Air Filtration. Have you ever had a pulse valve in your dust collector stop working and wonder what's wrong? Well, today we're going to talk about troubleshooting your dust collector valves and the different things that might be causing the problem. I have here a, a typical dust collector valve uh, that you'd find, or solenoid valve you'd find in your dust collector. Uh, symptoms of a valve not working are things like you hear air leaking through it, it stops pulsing, or the pulse is real weak, or sometimes it may just be that your filters inside your collector just aren't cleaning properly. Those can all be symptoms of something wrong with this pulse valve. Uh, unfortunately, all of those symptoms can mean many different things are wrong in your dust collector, or in the valve. And so a lot of times fixing these valves are trial and error. So we're gonna start with the most common problems and work our way into the more rare ones to help you figure out what's wrong. So the first thing that we wanna look at is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is this rubber section that's between the two, sec the, the top and bottom half of the valve. On this particular valve, the diaphragm looks like this. And the purpose for the diaphragm is it actually what opens and closes the valve when the valve operates to let the air go through or not. So um, this one's nice and new. Uh, over time, your diaphragms can start to look like this, where they get old, the rubber can crack or get holes in it. Uh, the diaphragm can get pitted and allow air to leak through. So the first thing you want to do is open up your valve and take a look at your diaphragm uh, and make sure it's in good condition. If you see any holes or tears or imperfections, change it out. Uh, this particular valve has a smaller uh, second diaphragm on the top, um, which looks like this. So check that one too. Usually you don't have problems, but I recommend if you're changing the big one, you change out the little one as well. The other thing to look for is on top of each diaphragm, there's a spring which aids in its operation. If the spring breaks, your diaphragm valve may not work properly. So check the springs as well when you're looking at your, your diaphragm. Okay, after you've changed your diaphragm or you've inspected it and it all looks good, the next thing to check is the solenoid. Now the solenoid is the working part that is uh, in the middle of this coil. So I'm gonna pull this off to show you how this works a little bit. So the coil is nothing more than a bunch of copper wires uh, covered in this case plastic, which makes this work like an electromagnet. So when a charge gets placed to this, it creates a magnetic field, which makes a little plunger that's inside this solenoid post move up and down, and that's what starts the valve's operation. So um, inside this solenoid post, and I have one here that I've taken apart, there's a couple of parts. We have the outer housing, then we have the plunger, and we have a little spring. So when this is working properly, when the, solenoid, or when the coil gets energized, this little plunger moves up and down, which operates the valve. Um, the rubber parts on this can, uh, can wear out or get old and brittle over time and need to be replaced. Sometimes the solenoid post can get bent, and sometimes the plunger can get pitted or you can get uh, grit inside there that keeps it from moving and operating properly. I've seen these get stuck in both the open and closed positions where they stop working. So uh, change out the solenoid with a solenoid repair kit and that may solve your problem. If that still doesn't solve your problem, then I look at the coil itself. Now the coil has no moving parts, so they tend not to wear out, but they are susceptible to electrical shorts or other environmental conditions which may uh, weaken the copper wires that are inside the coils. So after your diaphragm and your solenoid, try the coil. If that still doesn't solve your problem, then the next thing that I would go and look at your timer board in your dust collector controller. So this is a, a sample timer board. The first thing that I would check on the timer board is the fuse. Typically, if there's lights on the timer board, the fuse is okay. So if you're not getting any power to your timer board, check the fuse, that might be your culprit. Timer board problems are kind of strange. They tend to uh, have random things happening to your cleaning system um, that are kind of unpredictable, not always the same. Those tend to indicate possible short circuits in your timer board. And like any other uh, computer uh, or circuit board, these, um, the more exposed they are to extreme conditions, the shorter their lifespan. So that may be your problem. If you checked all those out and you're still having trouble, I would make sure that all your other electrical connections are proper. Your power coming to your control panel and the wires going from the, the timer board out to your solenoids, make sure that they're all in good shape. A short circuit there or even some low voltage creeping across your neutral wire can cause things not to work right. The last thing to check is your compressed air. 
Generally, we recommend that your compressed air to your valves be it set at about 80 to 90 PSI. If it's drastically different from that, that may be causing your valves not to work right. Although the valves do work under a, a pretty wide range of pressures. But the one thing that most people forget to look at is something called the rebound pressure. So when you start out with your pulse valve, let's say your air header is at 90 PSI, your rebound pressure is what your pressure gauge reads the moment a pulse is finished. And if it drops more than 25% down below your, um, your original pressure, then uh, the valve may not close properly and that may be part of your problem. So check that as well. Um, if that doesn't solve your problem or if you'd like more help in troubleshooting your valve, give us a call and talk to one of our uh, experts today. <music>